LS Dyna is a widely used solver for performing highly nonlinear dynamic analysis types like crash, impact, drop test, and so on. In this video, we will use Hypermesh to set up a dynamic crash analysis for the LS Dyna solver. We will simulate the crash of a car chassis traveling at a speed of 60 km per hour on a planar rigid wall. The deformation, stress, and energy conservation plots will be observed during post processing. As LSDyna is not directly coupled with Hypermesh, we will set up the analysis file in Hypermesh and then export it as a K file. This K file will then be run using LSDyna Manager. So let's get right into it. I have already created the base model K file which includes the wall and the chassis in 2D mesh format. The link for this file is provided in the description. Feel free to download and use it to follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of all the steps involved in this analysis setup. The first step is to import this K file into Hypermesh and assign proper section and material to all the parts in the model. To start with the analysis setup, we have to change the default Hypermesh user profile to LSDyna. This can be done using the user profile icon provided in the ribbon. Now we will import the K file as a solver deck. Select the base model K file in selection box. With all other settings as default, import the solver deck. To view the mesh properly, let's switch to shaded elements view. Enable the solver browser from view panel. We will be using the solver browser to set up the analysis. As you can see, there are two different parts with 2D shell elements, the chassis and the wall. Now right click and select create section, section shell. We will use this section for both the parts. Let's set the number of integration points to 4. Now enter the value of thickness T1 as 5 mm. Right click, create, material, materials 1 to 50, power law plasticity. Provide a name to it. We will use the unit system as Newton, millimeter, ton and second throughout the setup process for this analysis. Enter density value as 1.4 E minus 9. E is 75,000. Poisson's ratio value is 0.33. Let's use K as 0.097. Set value of N as 0.33587. Let's set yield stress value as 400 megapascal. Similarly, create the MAT20 rigid material. Enter value of density as 7.85 E-9. Let's set E as 2.1 E5. Enter Poisson's ratio as 0.3. Now we will assign section and material to the parts. For the chassis, set section as shell and select material as aluminium in proper selection box. For wall, set section as shell and select rigid material in the selection box. Now we will specify the boundary conditions for the crash analysis. The rigid wall will be fixed in space and the chassis will be provided an initial velocity of 60 km per hour in appropriate direction. We will also specify a contact between the wall and the chassis to capture the interaction between these parts when the crash occurs. Let's take a look at how this is done. Right click, 
create boundary spc node let's use the by path selection criteria to select all the nodes on the edge of the wall to create single point constraints select the corner nodes to automatically select the edge nodes in between With all six degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Now create set set node set node list. We will use the by collector selection criteria to add all the nodes from chassis part to the set. Create initial initial velocity generation. Set the drop down to node set ID. Select the node set we created in the previous step. We will apply a velocity of 16,666 millimeters per second in negative z direction. To define interaction between the wall and the chassis, create contact. Automatic surface to surface, automatic surface to surface. Change the slave and master selection box to components. In this case, the chassis is the slave and the wall is the master entity. Let's use static friction coefficient as 0.2. Set the dynamic friction coefficient value as 0.1. Now we'll specify some additional settings to run the analysis for a definite time. These settings will also help us to extract specific outputs from the analysis for post-processing. To specify total run time for the analysis, create control, control termination. Set the end time as 0.15 second. Now create control energy. We will switch to the second option in all cases to calculate the energy dissipated by all forms during the crash. To output the results for post processing, create database binary d3 plot. Let's set the number of time intervals for result file as 0.0015 second. To output global variables like work and energy, add the binary option card to the analysis setup. Check the box next to global statistics and enter dt value as 0.0015. To output material energies, do the same for mat sum. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's export the k file to run it using lsdyna. Create a new folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space to avoid any errors during the analysis run.
The K file is now ready for run. We will use the lsdyna manager to load this K file and solve it using the lsdyna solver. After the analysis is complete, we will view the results using Hyperview. In the lsdyna program manager, go to start lsdyna analysis. Now select the K file which we exported from Hypermesh. Set the CPU and memory options as per the hardware specifications available. Click on run to launch the solver. This may take some time to solve. As normal termination was achieved, the analysis was successful. Let's open Hyperview to visualize the results of the crash analysis. Select the D3 plot file from working directory and apply the results. Let's view the displacement results from contours tab. We can clearly see the crash. For better visualization, we can switch the legend to dynamic scale. Select stress and set averaging method to simple. We can clearly see that the stress value is capped at 400 megapascal. That is, there is plastic deformation in the chassis. To view the energy conservation plots, let's split the graphics area in two windows. In the second window, set the template as hypergraph 2D. Now load the glstat file. Select energy, kinetic energy, internal energy and total energy. Energy. Set the units as millimeter, second, ton and apply the results. We can see that the kinetic energy reduces during the impact and there is a rise in the internal energy. The total energy is conserved throughout the crash duration. This validates our analysis setup. We have successfully performed a dynamic crash analysis using Hypermesh and LSDyna. And this is how we can perform a dynamic crash analysis using Hypermesh and LSDyna. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.